to get started, we're going to create a directory called packages. Now let's cd into packages and we'll create a directory called shared. This will act as a shared library between our web and our native code. Now we'll cd into our shared directory that we just created and type yarn init dash y. This will automatically create a package.json for us. Now that we have our package.json initiated, we'll just do a touch and say index.js. This will create an index.js file, and we're just going to set up some basic information that will display uh, a shared across uh, the web and the native application. So we're going to say const shared equals a, and then we'll just do export default shared. Now that we have our shared code, let's create the other two projects. So we're going to cd up to our packages, and we're going to type create react app, and then we're going to just call it web. And now that we have all three directories created, we're going to cd up to our main directory and then run yarn init. The reason we did this is that sometimes there are issues when there's a master package.json and you're installing children that also have package.json.json's. So this way we create the children with their package.json's and then create our master package.json that will define the workspaces. So now that we're in the root directory, we type yarn init and it'll walk us through. And when we get to private, we want to make sure that we set private to true. Otherwise, our workspaces will not work. With this package.json created here in the root, we need to define our workspaces. We won't need any of this unless you want to identify yourself, and we won't have an index.js. All we need to now is do is define our workspaces. And this is going to take an array, and that array is going to be a glob. And so Rather than defining each individual package, we can just say packages slash star, and any package that is created in here will be a workspace for Yarn. We'll first get the web version working. So we're going to need to use React App Rewired. This will allow us to add in custom configurations to the React app. So we're going to say Yarn Workspace. It will specify the workspace that we want to add the dependency to, so that'll be web. And then we'll say add React App Rewired, as well as React App Rewire Babel Loader. We'll save those as dev. Now that that's installed, we can go take a look at our web package.json and see that we've added our two dependencies here. What we'll need to do is rewire our startup scripts. So instead of React scripts, we're going to replace it with react-app-rewired. Now we need to create our config. That file is specifically named config-overrides.js. And this will allow us to receive the config from Create React App and modify it however we want. Rather than typing a bunch of code, we can go take a look at the example of React App Rewire Babel Loader. And we will just copy and paste this into our file here. We'll reconfigure it a little bit. We'll remove some comments. And we'll fix this to be the path of the package that we want to process with Babel. So the reason that we have to do this is that Create React App will not modify and Babelify any, any code outside of source. However, our shared code is outside of source. So we need to set up to include a path for Babel to compile. And that'll be the path to our shared folder. So we're going to say from our config.overrides, we're going to go up one directory and say shared. Now the only thing to do is to add shared as a dependency to web. So if we go here and we, we can say yarn workspace, specify the workspace that we want to add a dependency to, and it's going to be web. 
you'll add the name of our dependency, which is shared, and we're going to specify the version. Uh, otherwise, Yarn will not install the local version. It will install a NPM dependency called shared. So we're going to say at 1.0.0. The other way to do this is to edit the package.json uh, manually and then later run a yarn install in the root. Now that we have the web functioning, now we need to get our native to work. So we're going to need to add two dependencies that will help us in resolving dependencies that are not located at the node modules that are directly in that are that it's a sibling node modules, but it's in the node modules for the entire project. So how we do that is we're going to do yarn workspace. We'll specify our workspace as native. We'll then say add, and we're going to add crna dash make symlinks for yarn workspaces. We'll also add metro bundler dash config dash yarn workspaces. I'm going to go ahead and add those as dev dependencies. So inside of our native folder, we have a package.json and it links to an entry point. Now, if we went and looked at this entry point, that's going to be inside of node modules here. However, our node modules is all the way up here. So what we need to do is create a new entry point that maps correctly to our dependencies. So we are going to create inside of our native folder here. We're going to create a new file called appentry.js. This file is merely an entry point that will register the root component with Expo. If we look here, we are merely exporting a default app. We aren't actually registering with it with React Native. So in order to do that, we're going to import keep awake and register root component. We'll import our app so we can see that we're telling it to import this app. And then if we're in dev mode, we'll keep keep everything awake, and then we'll just register our app. We'll also need to create two configuration files. The first one will be rn-cli.config.js, and this one will register the path to the node modules for the rn packager. So here, we'll import path. We'll also import get config from our Metro Bundler config workspaces. And then we need to inform our config of where our node modules are located. So we'll say const options equals node modules. And then we'll do a resolve path. So we'll say path.resolve from our current directory. We're going to go up two directories, up one to packages, and then up to where our node modules is located. And now we can do module.exports equals get config. We'll pass in the current directory name, as well as the, our options of where our node modules are located. This will instruct the Metro Bundler Packager of where it should look for our dependencies. Now, the other file we need to make is called link-workspaces. Here, we're going to require our crna make sim links, and that will return a function that we're going to call with the current directory name. What this is going to do is it's going to traverse through until it hits our package.json that says workspaces. It's going to find all of the workspace packages and then it's going to inform uh, the bundler that it needs to include these other packages that are inside of here as a place to search for code. 
Part of the reason this is so complicated is because the Metro Bundler that powers React Native does not actually support symlinks. So we must provide project roots, which are like pseudo symlinks. That is exactly what this CRNA make symlinks for Yarn's workspaces package is doing. It's just automatically traversing and figuring that out for us. And now we need to wire everything up. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to delete our main from here. We're going to create a pre-start function. So say pre-start, and then we're going to say node, and then we're going to run our link workspaces.js function. This will run before the React Native scripts start function runs, and this will then appropriately link everything up. The other thing we need to do is edit our app.json. This is the config for Expo, and it determines on how the packager will run. It gets fed into the packager. So we're going to say entry point, and we're going to supply our dot slash app entry.js. We're also going to add two different configurations. One is called ignore node modules validation. So it won't look in the current directory for the node modules to validate, as well as the packager options that we want to provide. And we're going to pass in our config and then also clear out our project roots. The link workspaces and the RNCLI config is what's actually wiring up all the stuff to the Metro bundler to tell it what the project roots are and where the uh, node modules lives. The other settings aren't necessarily important, but this just unlists it from being public on Expo, defines our platforms, a version, and that our application will only work in portrait mode. We did miss one thing. We forgot to add Yarn Workspace. We forgot to add it to our native. We're going to add the shared at 1.0.0. So we're going to add our shared code dependency to the native code. Now from here, we should go and edit the web. And we're going to say source app.js. And we're going to import our shared code from shared. And because the shared code was just a string that we exported, we're just going to render shared code right there. Now we can test if it works by going into our packages, going into web, and running yarn start. And we can see that it's actually imported our shared code, and we're able to use shared code inside of our Create React App web application. Now if we switch back to our code and our terminal, we can kill that and we can go up here and go to our native application. And now inside of our native application, we're going to want to edit that code. And inside of our app.js, we'll do an import shared code from shared. And we'll just render it as some text. We'll verify our package.json to make sure that everything's spelled correctly, and we'll fix node link workspaces, make sure it's linking to the correct file. And now we can go to our terminal, type yarn start, Now that the packager has successfully started, we can press I to open the iOS simulator. And now that our simulator has started up, we can see that we also have the same exact code shared across web and native. 